Hello everybody and thank you for joining. This is your host Nino and what I am demonstrating to you today is this 20 euro MacBook, not Pro, from 2009. And what have I done with this 20 euro MacBook? Well, with the help of the Open Core Legacy Patcher, I got it up to MacOS Monterey. I bought this beautiful little machine from a student who actually wanted to sell it for 30 euro, but then he somehow messed up formatting the disk and was too afraid that I might get his private data. So we agreed that he shall simply take out the disk and sell it to me without disk. And hence I paid not 30, as was the original price, but 20. So it's not a gift, it's something one can buy and that's its value. I do not think that I would have assumed to call Apple machines the computers for the masses. <laughs> But the 20 euro computer, really, I deem that's quite affordable. So, now let's look at our system. I'm not making this video from inside the machine because I want you to also see what happens when we look at the outer world, so to say the outside environment of it. So that's gonna be its screen and I'm now going to turn it on so you can see how long it will take it to boot to Monterey. I picked Monterey and not Ventura because this little beast has only 4 GB RAM whereas Ventura is said to require 8 GB. Now the problem is that uh, there is RAM which can be purchased for this machine and the upgrade in theory would be extremely easy as everything is very accessible in this old type of Macintosh. But, unfortunately, the sellers apparently know that you are going to use that RAM to upgrade some old expensive laptop and they are selling it as if it's golden. I should also mention, perhaps, that, you know, 2009, that was still before Steve Jobs died. I'm always thinking like he died, I don't know, three, five years ago. Well, it's over a dozen by now. Uh, but that was really one of the machines which got out from his Apple. <laughs> the, the further ones are of course very nice, but that of course gives it a special flair. Now I'll pause you for a second to log in. So, as you can see, a certain, not too large, but also noteworthy lagginess is there. We have now reached our system, so you see it's far from being unusable. And now finally also those things on the upper right appeared. Very good. Now, I got last time, I demonstrated it on a much newer machine, <laughs> on, a, on a eight years younger machine than this. I got the question, does the microphone work and does the camera work? So let's try that. Hmm? So there's photo booth, I haven't tried that yet. So it's going to be surprising for me too. So photo booth is here. And haha, <laughs> oopsie daisy. It does not seem like photo booth is going to be working. <laughs> okay, then there may be no photo booth, huh? It's not very great, but what shall one do? Let's try Audacity. That will show me whether the sound recording is working. Yeah, yeah, there's an update and so on and so forth. Actually, why not? Let's get through the update and you'll have an idea, realistically, how a not too large program is updated in this system. I'm now supposed to pull it into the applications. Alright. Replace. Ah, oh, the other audacity is in use, then I'll have to close that and close that. Right, and quit it, and then I'll have to drag it in, 
And I'll have to say a place. So that should have been it. That should have replaced my audacity. Let's try audacity again. <clears throat> so again, we were here at the start page, which we don't really need. And now let's try. Be greeted, my dear viewers. Okay, it worked. I, I could make it louder, but let's say for the demonstration purposes, it did in fact work. So I do have wireless. I do have microphone. I lack camera. Well, that is annoying. Does it, does it really not work? So what happens if I say this or that? No, nothing. All right. So there will be no nice camera effects for me on my 2009 Macintosh, unless I figure out how to connect a USB camera and just do it through it. Now, a more relevant question, of course, would be, how is it regarding writing texts? Hmm? Let's try that. We will start Word. And as you see, one presses it and one does have to wait not too long, but a little bit. We're creating a blank document. We are, I don't know, increasing the font to 72. And we're saying, hello there. This is from modern word. So you can see as a sort of typewriter machine, this completely will suffice. Now that's lovely, but would it be also possible to surf the internet? That seems to be a common topic. I would like to mention that uh, there are ways apparently also for older machines to, to browse the internet. In, in variants of Mac OS such as 10.11 or 10.10 .10 and things like that. But I do have a modern one, a modern operating system. So I put here Opera, Firefox and Safari, which came of course with the machine. So let's see how long startup takes. I have now started all three. They are making a little bit of a dance there. Maybe if you wonder, was there any particular circumstance to pay attention to when I installed such an old machine? I can tell you there was one thing. I first installed it with macOS El Capitan, which was the last version this machine would natively support. And only after having installed macOS El Capitan did I get the Open Core Legacy Patcher, installed it there, fetched Monterey, and then installed it with Monterey. So essentially I have been installing the system twice, once with a pretty old version, which however would run my open core legacy patcher, and then with a newer version, which I wanted to have. Let's go to the BBC. So as you can see, this is all pretty much working the way we would imagine. So if I click here, it does not have such delays in operation that would render it in any form unusable. All right, so as you can see, I can browse the internet, I could write texts. Let's try Firefox. No, I don't want to have it as default browser. Don't show this message again. No, not now. Here, let's go to dwelt.de, maybe. I don't know. So you could see this loaded everything just the way it was supposed to. 
like that was not too complex to handle okay now it is somehow whining about cookies oh gosh accepting cookies and then we're having safari which sometimes works nicely but usually is really a pain to use i am not that much of a fan sometimes it's like it ticks and ticks along Al Jazeera dot com. I like Al Jazeera. It gives you a different perspective. Nobody ever will give you neutral information, but seeing very different perspectives will permit you to more accurately build up an image of events for and by yourself. So, whatever that was, I clicked on something by mistake apparently. Okay, so I can surf in all three browsers, but I think I'll stick with Opera because I do like Opera and it has been always quite reliable and lightweight. Might also go to Firefox sometimes when something requires more heavy duty browsing. And now let's try something quite important actually. You will not be watching all that many static sites hmm. you will quite likely watch uh, videos on your machine at least that's one of the things people normally do let's google my friend Ivan and his YouTube channel don't be surprised it is in Bulgarian ordinary guy tries things so ordinary guys and guy tries things yeah there you are Ivan oh really this should have been a macOS video but something else happened oh, I'm totally looking forward to watching that So this works fine. There is no waiting. Maybe I should try something different, something with more action. Let's say volcano eruption. Hmm? Volcano eruption is a good idea because that should be having a lot of speckles on the screen and we should be able to see From whether this is working moment, a volcano in iceland collapses sending lava flowing over the side to a... so that worked so in other words i can edit texts i can browse the net with several different browsers and i can watch videos and while that will not permit me to do any heavy duty things from the hardware perspective purely unless one is ready to wait quite a lot it has become once again an extremely usable machine and so with that i can clearly recommend you the open core legacy patcher as it is entirely apt to turn an ancient machine into something more practically usable. I do hope you found today's video useful in case you were considering but isn't my Macintosh too old? Well, likely not. <laughs> and I hope to greet you here soon again. From me, have a great day. Till next time and goodbye.